I'll rate everyone. Welcome to the really big room of intimidation. I'd like to ask everyone to give a warm welcome to Norvald, who's going to be talking to us about uh, MySQL and uh, its improvements in spatial uh, capabilities. So please clap. Thank you. Um, so, uh, unless you didn't know it already, MySQL does have special support. So, I think that's the most important thing I want you to remember from this talk is that MySQL does have spatial support. It's all on the first slide. So, I'm going to go uh, quickly through the history of MySQL. I've seen talks this, uh, this conference where people say, yeah, this is what we did last year. This is an update from last time we were at Fast4G. We did this, we did this. And we haven't been here much, so I guess it would be more than 20 years in 20 minutes. Um, but luckily, this history of spatial in MySQL compresses really well. It's a lot of doing nothing. Uh, so I'll go quickly through that. Uh, and then I'm going to go through all the stuff that we need in order to support a, any type of data in a database system. Um, so we're going, you're almost going to need data types. You're going to need a way to store those data types. If you want any type of, of performance, you need indexing. And in order to have some fun with it, you need some functions. So numbers wouldn't be fun unless you could do addition and multiplication and other stuff. Same with geometries. You have to be able to manipulate them in a way. And in particular for, for uh, spatial data, you need spatial reference systems, some kind of metadata. Uh, that's the same thing for text strings. You need some character sets and, and collations. So this is basically what you need to do for any data type. And I'm going, go, going to go through the, the way of doing it for, for spatial and explain what we have in MySQL. So I'll start with the, uh, the history of MySQL. Uh, I think we, like the project is, is more than 20 years old, but I think spatial support was added like between 10 and 15 years ago. I wasn't around then. Um, I think they just added data types a bit more and then didn't do anything for a while. It gives a really bad reputation. Um, but luckily, most of that is now end of life. 5.5 five was end of life uh, last December. 5.6 is, well, you should migrate away. I think it will be end of life uh, at the end of next year or something. So after 5.6, a lot of users came in and asked for spatial support. And um, we had to do something. We actually hired new people just for adding spatial support. We really rebooted the whole spatial stuff in MySQL. So um, with a product with 20 years of history, millions of users, it's not often that product management comes and said, if you want to break backwards compatibility, that's fine. Uh, I don't think I will ever hear those words again, but we, we were told that when we started with 5.7 GIS. So we, we uh, boldly said we're going to be as standard and compliant as we can. If we want to deviate from standards, uh, we, we can extend, but if we want to deviate from standards, we really need a real good reason. Basically, the standard has to be wrong. So we follow, tried to follow all the C standards, uh, and in particular for databases, SQL MM. Um, it's uh, going pretty well. We also decided that we would had it with doing our own homegrown algorithms. They were usually buggy and gave some, they gave a result, not necessarily a correct result. So we wanted a, a library that's used by a large community that we don't have to be alone in maintaining and using. Uh, someone else can help us with, with the correctness and that's something that is actually not only for MySQL. And we looked around, uh, we found several options. Uh, we ended on Boost Geometry, the Boost C++ libraries. Uh, it has a community, it's not a very big community, but it's a very welcoming community. And uh, they also had a, a direction, a, a goal that we felt fit very well with MySQL. They were also C++ and header only, so it's a compile time dependency. We don't have to install any libraries at runtime. Really good for us. We, we, MySQL runs on, on many hardware and, and software platforms. There's, uh, mess of, of runtime dependencies. If you, if you add one more, it's, it's a lot of work. Back then, MySQL uh, was Cartesian only. Boost Geometry was also Cartesian only, so that also fits. Uh, but we knew we wanted geometry. 
uh, ge sorry, geography support. But we couldn't make it in 5.7 time frame. So in 2015, we released 5.7, and uh, it was Cartesian, but it was, everything has been replaced with, with uh, boost geometry. Then MySQL 8 came last April, uh, sorry, April 2018. Um, and then we had like three years to, to add the geography support. We first added it to boost geometry, then we added it to MySQL. And now we have a, a catalog spatial reference systems, Cartesian and uh, geographic. And this is built in. So the second thing I want you to remember from this talk is that the first one, first one is MySQL has spatial support. The second one is if you have MySQL, you have spatial support. It's always there. You can't even compile it out. It's always there. Points and line strings are basic data types in the same way that numbers and text strings are. It's fully integrated with all the dictionary and information schema we used and all the stuff we have. There's no plugins, there's no extensions to install and configure. So let's get started with the stuff you need to, um, to support spatial in MySQL. We need data types, and we have, we have support for all the basic geometries, point, line, string, polygon, and collections of these. Unlike some other open source spatial database systems, we have decided to use the same types for Cartesian and geographic data. That's what the standard says, and we didn't see a good reason to not do it that way. So the SRID decides if it's geographic or Cartesian based on the description or the definition of the spatial reference system. For now, it's only 2D. Uh, our users are asking for 3D. They're not asking for 3D computations that are asking to be able to store and retrieve the third coordinates. So I guess that would be the first milestone on 3D for us. Um, but we have a few higher priority stuff to do first, so 3D is, uh, is not coming immediately. As I said, spatial reference systems, these geometries has to be, have to be somewhere. 5.7 only supported the, uh, the abstract limitless plane with uh, unitless axis. Um, adding production support in, in 8.0 was pretty simple as long as you keep within the production and you're kind of moving to, uh, between projections or, or to and from a geographic system. Adding the geography part was the, was the work that we did. So we spent three years more or less adding geography support to boost geometry and then to MySQL. Um, and we ended up with uh, more than 5,000 uh, spatial reference systems in our catalog from the EPCD dataset. That's everything that the EPCD dataset has that we can support. Uh, we're lagging a year and a half behind EPCD at the moment. Uh, we hope to fix that. Uh, but if you are, are uh, not willing to wait, you can create your own based on the EPCD definitions. You can create your own stuff that is not in the EPCD dataset. And those spatial reference systems will be treated the same as, as the, the default catalog that we deliver. We are access order compliant. Uh, we follow the ODC recommendation of using the spatial reference systems access order. EPSG is latitude longitude, so everything we have is latitude longitude. If you want long, longitude latitude, you can create your own spatial reference system. Or we have a few tweaks where we convert on import and export. So you can be explicit about what you are using in your queries, and then we will do all the magic. Our geography support is general. You can specify any ellipsoid. Uh, I know some systems only support uh, EPC 4326. You can define anything you can in MySQL. You can have any unit you like, um, any axis direction. You can have south and west as axis. Uh, we will handle all that stuff behind the scenes, and we have SC transform to trans transform between these ellipsoids. We support all geometries in, in Cartesian and geographic. Um, our interpretation of, of lines, uh, lines and line segments is that they follow the shortest path. So on a Cartesian plane, it's a straight line. On a globe, it's um, a part of a great circle or, or, or a great ellipsis, uh, if it's uh, ellipsoidal. So that was the data types. Um, each data type can be used as a column type in MySQL. You can create a column type point, a column type geometry collection, or a general 
type the geometry if you want to store anything. You can, but you don't have to restrict it to a single SRID. Uh, but if you want to index this, uh, you should restrict it to an SRID because it does make sense to, to have an index of, over a mixed SRID column. Uh, you, you can't compute the bounding boxes for that. So we have R trees for Cartesian and geographic data. The difference is kind of geographic data. If a line goes east to west, the bounding box has to be extended for since the, the curve uh, bends northward or southward, depending on the hemisphere. Um, this is all automatic. The R trees are used uh, based on a cost-based decision by the MySQL optimizer, or you can write a hint to force it to, to use it or not use it. So here's some simple SQL to create a table and insert the data. So you see we have a point data type. You could write line string or geometry or whatever. Uh, we lock it to SRD4326 so that no one can ins insert anything else by mistake. And we create an index on the point column. Uh, the R tree index is the only possible index at the moment for, for spatial data, so it's, you don't have to specify the type of index. It's, it's the only possibility. Um, and then we insert data. And this is uh, Bucharest. Uh, if you see uh, that 44 uh, is the latitude, 26 is longitude. Um, if you want longitude latitude, you can specify that. And that's actually what we recommend. If you know what you have, just be explicit about it in your queries, and it, it will not go wrong with MySQL. You can also be explicit when you retrieve your data and say that you want longitude latitude or latitude longitude. And then you don't have to care what, what EPSG says about that uh, spatial reference system. So that was storage and indexing. So we have the data types. We can store them. Uh, we can index them. Uh, then we need some functions to, to make this fun. And these are only the import and export functions. Uh, we support well-known text, well-known binary from OGC. Uh, we also support geohashes. That's only for points, and so maybe not that interesting. Uh, we also have geojson, and that's becoming the, the more and more the, the popular uh, the, the choice of, of uh, our users. MySQL is, to a large extent, a backend for websites. Uh, we have a lot of users using MySQL for that. And as you know, if you're on the web using Leaflet or, or open layers, you want GeoJSON. We also have a lot of JSON, general JSON uh, support in MySQL, not geo-related, that you can use to write really advanced stuff to fill the properties of your GeoJSON features. So you can pull out a lot of, of uh, stuff from your tables and insert into the feature, uh, the, the properties field of your features. That's a really good example of how this is integrated. We have all the standard comparison functions, or most of them at least. Uh, you have contains and within and that kind of thing. These are, are optimized with uh, RT indexes uh, based on like, if it's beneficial to use the index or not. Um, we also have, we have the standard ST functions that use the exact shape of the geometry. We also have these MBR functions that use the bounding boxes. Those, the math in there is much, much simpler. It's just kind of checking the bounds of the, of the box. Uh, so it's really fast. And if you're doing something like the viewport of a, a map on a website, just give me anything that should be viewed on the screen right now then these functions will help you. They are much faster, and they will typically fail in, in giving you a bit more data than you are asking for, but that doesn't matter. You can just ignore painting that. And it goes much faster, and that's what you want when you have a, a interactive map. We have buffer, we have centroid, we have convex hull, envelope. We have set operations like union and, inter, uh, and intersection. Um, all that stuff works. Uh, on all data types, by the way. Um, some systems only support, uh, does not support uh, geometry collections for, for these, we do. We have measures, area, distance, length. You can force it to the uh, spherical computation, so if it's geographic, it's faster. If, it's, if you have uh, Cartesian data, it's more accurate. Um, 
We also support the standard SQLMM option of specifying a, um, a unit for these computations. So you can get your result in, in uh, meters, in feet, in uh, the uh, German legal meter that I think is, is used in some spatial reference systems. Basically, we took the whole set of, uh, of uh, length units from the EPSG dataset and dumped it into MySQL. So all the stuff that's in EPSG, EPSG you can find in the, uh, as possible length units in, uh, for area and distance. We have all these functions to extract uh, endpoints and rings and, and to manipulate X and Y coordinates or latitude and longitude. And yeah, all that stuff you need to, to, to manipulate. So, uh, uh, geometries. So the same functions work on both Cartesian and geographic data. Um, and we want it that way as long as it makes sense. It's like longitude, latitude only makes sense for geographic. But uh, apart from that, mostly it's uh, it, all functions for, for all data types. We um, also have a, a general rule that all functions should support all geometries. Like I said, geometry collection should also be included in, in uh, union and intersection and all those functions. Um, sometimes we're waiting for, for boost geometry to do the final touches and then we might release a version with, uh, with a limited support for some data types or some spatial reference systems. For instance, now we have some functions that do not yet support geography. Um, that's because we're waiting for the support and, and first to get it in Boost and then to integrate it in MySQL. But it's coming. So we take this function by function and add it. So mostly we, we do support geography. We have a few things missing still. Um, yeah, if you want to prior, us to prioritize a certain function, give us a, a shout and we'll, we'll look at it. We're really open to input. And I would like to ask you guys to contribute. I would not ask you to contribute to MySQL. Well, that's fine if you want to, but we do have developers. Uh, we, we, like MySQL is open source, but we sell support to, to uh, fund the thing, and we are able to hire lots of developers. I would rather see you contribute to other OpenJS projects, like um, QGS, GeoServer, um, GDAL, they all need better MySQL support. That way you would help that project and you would help MySQL. So instead of contributing to MySQL, consider contributing to those projects and give them better MySQL support. So if you want to use MySQL, help those projects. Um, we'd be really happy. We'd also be happy to help you guys work out any problems you encounter if you see anything that we're missing in order to um, provide the best support for that product. Give us a shout and we'll, we'll look into it. Uh, we really want this to work. Um, and yeah, if you, if you have done this, just if you know something that works with MySQL really well, let us know and we'll help you spread the word saying this product really supports MySQL. If you use MySQL, use this product. That's something we can do. So we really, really want you guys to help the other products. So this was a brief overview of what we have in MySQL. It's, uh, it's a high level. Uh, if you want the details, the dirty details, we have mysqlserverteam.com, which is a blog where the MySQL server engineering team, the developers, and uh, sometimes even the managers uh, chip in on, on writing blog posts about what have we done in the, uh, in, in the latest release. So, uh, the people that write and implement these features will blog about what they do and how they work and why we decided to do this instead of that. So MySQLServerTeam.com is, is your best source for, uh, uh, for up-to-date information about MySQL. There's usually a rush of blog posts around each release, like every three months, and then it's a bit slower in between, but uh, there's, uh, there's a lot of information coming out there. With that, I think... Uh, we are ready for, uh, for questions, if there are any. Thank you. Any questions? Yeah, we don't have a mic, so just say your question, and I'll repeat it afterwards.
the EPSG definition of axis order, I'm used to looking in the database and seeing the order in which the axes are defined. Uh, but it's, uh, and that changes based on what number we're using. And you said a blanket statement about that law, and so I was just confused. Yeah, so the question is about access order and kind of the statement I had that we are following the EPSG access order and that is always latitude and longitude. Um, so yes, we do follow the access order as it is defined in spatial reference system definition, in WKT. And I might be wrong now, but I did go through this once and I couldn't find any systems in the EPSG dataset that was long last, that we supported at least. We, we don't do 3D, there might be something there, uh, but all I could find had latitude, longitude. Uh, I might have missed some though, uh, but we do follow the order in the definition. The polar ones don't have an east and west, there's lots of uh, So you're asking about the polar um, uh, projections, and yes, those are projections. So I was talking about the, the um, geographic ones. Uh, if you project it, you have X and Y. X and Y might mean different things, and, and if it's polar, then it's south this way and south that way, or north this way and north that way. But then the math is Cartesian, so it's kind of simple for us that way. Um, so yeah, we support any axis direction for, for a projected system as well, but it doesn't really affect us that much. Um, it's X and Y, and you just keep to X and Y. Any other questions? None? I have one question. Have any of you guys used MySQL, or are you using MySQL? Yeah, for spatial? Oh, actually. Uh, will any of you guys consider MySQL for your next project, spatial project? Well, actually, one guy who dares to admit it. Good, thank you. I think my mission is, mission is done here. We have at least one guy who is willing to go out and try MySQL. Thank you.